I no longer know what century this story, which I'm going to read you, happened in. It happened here, in this field. All I do know is that in some way it happened now. It's called An Independent Woman. Catherine seized each man to embrace him. Her long arms pulled him towards her tall body. First Nicola, her brother, then Jean-Francois, the neighbor. And she kissed them on both cheeks, near the mouth. At 74, she was just the oldest of the three. It's buried one meter deep, said Catherine. I can hear Mathieu telling me that, one meter deep. Where does it cross the field? shouted Nicola. She shrugged her shoulders. Fifty years is a long time, but I remember him saying it was one meter deep. Two months ago, when she was helping her brother bring in his second hay, she had told him that the water to the bassin beside her house was no longer flowing. After that, she had refused to mention the subject again. She was going to be dependent on nobody. Yet now, the expression in her eyes was excited, as though she had willed the two men to come up. The spring must be at the top, said Jean Froissart, and he began to climb the field, disappearing into the fog. Jean Francois, she cried out, come back before I lose sight of you. Born into another house, Catherine would surely have married. But each year of her life, more men had left the valley, and she herself had inherited too little, too little, to propose to any of them that they remain. She seized hold of Jean Francois by the arm. He shouldn't have come up. You shouldn't give up the whole day here for me. We dig one meter deep at right angles to the line. Begin at the top, come down to the bottom. That way, we're bound to arrive at the pipe. And the pipe will lead us to the spring. Jesus, Maria, Joseph, we'll have it by midday. They began digging. Underneath the snow, the ground was still unfrozen. When Catherine came from the house carrying in a canvas bag glasses, a jug of hot wine and some bread and cheese, she heard the men before she could see them. At a distance of 20 meters, the white fog merged into the white snow on the ground. Each time Jean-Francois bent his back to strike the pick into the earth, he grunted, and she heard Nicola scraping his spade so the earth should not stick to it and make it heavier. She had worked once as a waitress in a cafe near the Gare de Lyon in Paris. She and her brother Mathieu, the one who had laid the pipe and the one who was killed by the Germans during the occupation here. They were the first members of the family, her and her brother, ever to earn wages. And to do this, they both went to Paris. He was a porter, she was a waitress. Her lasting impression of the capital was one of money continually changing hands. There, without money, you could literally do nothing. Not even drink water. With money, you could do anything. He who could buy courage was brave, even if he was a coward. The two men had dug the trench exactly one meter deep. From time to time they had measured it. It was straight, impeccably cut, cleaned out. One side stacked the turf, on the other the earth. And all the stones lifted out were put together to make a pile. Nicolas scrambled out of the trench and Jean-Francois plunged his spade into the loose soil as if in the hope that it would disappear into the very center of the earth. Ah, 
living by himself in the corner under the mountain. Just over there. He had the habit of making violent movements. In his solitude down there, such violence was a kind of company. Catherine poured out the hot wine. The men kept the glasses up to their faces between sips, their noses in the steam, which smelt of cloves and cinnamon. In God's name, it must be here, Nicholas grumbled. I tell you, if it's not in this field, there's no fire in hell. During the second half of the day, Nicolas continued the long trench already begun. Jean-Francois dug another, higher up, and Catherine started digging a third near the pair of apple trees. When she had cut the turf, she kicked the snow, kicked the snow off before lifting the pieces up. She disliked having cold hands or cold feet. At night, she took three hot bricks to bed with her, one for each foot and one for the small of her back. As she swung the pick, the breath came out of her with a whistle, <sighs> quite unlike Jean-Francois's gurnt. <sighs> After working in a restaurant by the Gare de Lyon, she became a maid in a doctor's house. The doctor worked at the hospital of saint Antine and lived a few streets away in the Rue Charles V. Her principal job were uh, cleaning the grates and washing floors and laundering. The first time she laundered, she had asked the cook where the wood ash was. Wood ash? Wood ash? Said the cook, incredulous. To clean the sheets, explained Catherine. The cook told her to go back to her goat shit. It was the first time Catherine heard the word peasant used as an insult. <laughs>